How are you doing? Great, how are you? I'm pretty good. We're very, very happy to have you on. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, it's going to be a fun podcast. Um, Jackson is just going to go down um, to get your um, Okay. Thank you so much for taking time to do this for me, brother. Oh, yeah, anything for you, sister. Now you can just ask questions, don't worry about it. Oh, gotcha. Well, we're going to have fun. I just want to let you know that, that it's all about, you know, just, you know, um, celebrating your career and your new chapter and, and, and love and just start to have a new baby and all that good stuff. So just so you know, it, that's what it's going to be about, real talk. Real talk. Yeah. <laughs> just so you know, I'm trying to cover. I was in Vegas this past weekend for the fight, the football party, so I had one good old weekend, so I get it, you're like, let's make it do what it do. <laughs> you got the fight, that was a good fight. Let me tell you something, I was five rows from the ring, and it was, I mean, neither one of them have anything, I mean, of course, I wanted to follow him, but he has nothing to be ashamed of, because he knocked him down twice, and I literally thought he had it, I mean, I was up cheering, everybody was looking at me mad, and I was like, I don't care, um, and he, I mean, he rocked it. He rocked it good. He just, the dude was huge. Well, you know, Tyson's a traveler. They built a little different. He's a gypsy. Yeah. So, you right. know. Yeah. And he's a real gangster. You know, his family. You ever look at Peaky Blinders? No. Well, when they reference the Furies in Peaky Blinders, uh -huh. they talking about his family. They, they real, they serious out there. I know, I know, I know some people out there. Like I know the original, I know original, I knew I knew them for a while too, but he's that 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 family is serious. Serious, yeah. Well I mean he did his thing. I mean I, I have to get him. He just basically outboxed him and wore him down. I just got I now I wanna see him fight someone besides Dante. I wanna see what he looks like against yes. somebody else. Yeah. Been, yeah, because that's what one thing somebody was telling me to everybody's like, Well the thing with Dante He's always been awkward, so he, yeah, yeah, he's never been a real yeah. you know Yeah. You know he used to be a fight promoter, right? Out. You didn't know that? Yeah, no, I did. You don't tell me about it, though. <laughs> okay. Okay, all right, cool. Well, let's, you ready to get started, LaFern? Um, yes, just one, one real quick thing. So after we uh, finish the podcast, uh, Vivica will say goodbye. But if you hold on, just in case we have any quick pickups, because, you know, the internet in and out sometimes. So um, just hold on at the end. Okay? It's all good. All right. All right. Have a great show. Thank you, LaFern. Okay, let me count you down. And can... And can, before you start it, you want me to say, do you want me to, uh, because you know I know you're Dave, but do you want me to say, Dave, Damon, just, I want to make sure you want your government name. Whatever you want. I want to say Dave, because I know you're Dave. Uh, all right. All right, here we go. All right. Three, three, two, one. Mm. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl, Vivica Fox, and welcome to an all new Hustling with Vivica A. Fox. We're going bigger and bolder. Your hustle is going to get an upgrade with the most surprising, exciting, and fabulous guests from all walks of life. You're in good hands, darlings. All right, come on in here. As me and my guest today, we go back like Kool-Aid. My guest today is a legendary executive, producer, entrepreneur, and musical visionary who ain't afraid to get things done his way, even if some folks may not like it. But for all of his groundbreaking accomplishments, he really makes love for his family a priority. That's my kind of name. After all, he is in love for a living. Y'all get ready to learn how to hustle from the ultimate, from the, let me do it again. Y'all get ready to learn a little bit more about the ultimate hustler, Damon Dash, who I call Dame Dash. <laughs> Welcome to Hustling with Bill K. Fox. Dame, how you doing? I'm good, I'm better now. How you doing? I Shining to your day, you know. Definitely, I can feel your shine. I'm, I'm getting a tan from you, a love tan. I like it. Woo! I love it, I love it, I love it. Well, like I said, um, when we talked in the pre interview, I just want people to get to know like a different side of you from what they think they may see on, you know, blogs, this, that, and the third, to really get how you became the ultimate hustler. So let's talk about where, where are you from, right? 
I'm from New York, but you know, I claim Harlem like it's its own city within the city. Oh, why do you say that? Because it was its own universe. You know, it's where I got all my swag from. You know, it's a trajectory of my whole perspective on the universe. Harlem. Uh, I got that. Harlem's the coolest place in the world. Like, you know, everyone in New York copies everyone in Harlem. Everyone everywhere else to me copies everyone in New York, in America, and then everyone in the world copies America. So we're the root of it all. We're the seed. I got it. So now, can I ask you with the recent changes? Because, you know, in my honest opinion, Harlem has changed a little bit from how it used to be back in the day. Do you still see Harlem having that same swag? Well, everything changes. It's supposed to. So, you know, I haven't been outside in 30 years, so I would hope that it's changed. So I, I'm sure it's more evolved. And, you know, the way New York is, it's, you know, way more than just one culture in one place. Everything's all mixed up. And uh, the real estate is going up. So, yeah, the, the real estate in Harlem has gone up. I would say that. Yeah, that's definitely been the most, the biggest change. There's I've a couple seen. of ideals that I, you know, when I left, were in full effect that may not be now and people are surviving different, mm -hmm. but I can't judge that, I'm not outside. Yeah, you see, but that's what I love about you. You're like, hey, do what you gonna do, and I'ma still do me. And I'm gonna keep going my own Well, I, I'm used to, you know, the world as I left it, as far as the uh, morals and principles, you know, my survival skills, and what got me to where I'm at today. You know, honor is the only thing that's protecting me. So, that's all I know. And, you know, maybe things aren't the same, but I still abide by the same honor code for sure. I know, that's right. So I have to congratulate you. I just heard that you have a brand new baby. Oh yeah, baby Dusko. Where's baby Dusko? Uh, he might be taking a nap. You said, you said, what'd you say, I'm sorry? I said he might be taking a nap, but he's around. <laughs> he's around, how old is he? He's, uh, he's pushing 11 months, so he's like late 10 months, you know, about oh. to be 11 months. See, I'm trying to make sure y'all got him on a little bit of a schedule, right? Oh, he's on a serious schedule. He's been potty trained since he was about three months. You know, he can pick his states, his colors, he's talking in Spanish, you know, he, he sign language, you know, floats for three minutes with the clothes on. His mom's been putting him through it. You know, we developed, a, we developed a curriculum. I've been spending a lot of time with a crew called the OSG, which is 120 black principals. I'm part of this group. And we're developing curriculum from the womb to three years old and so on and so forth. But you know, the right ones. Hey, can you, can you, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Yeah, I'll be able to say, oh, yeah. Uh, we can hear. <laughs> that was some good stuff that you were telling me there. But the whole, I love that she's clean. Like, can we start that over because I want people to hear this? Like, oh, what I was saying is I'm part of a group called yeah. the OSG, which is 100 and 20 black principals all over the world, predominantly unapologetic. And we've been developing a curriculum from the womb till three and so on. And, you know, we've been implementing it on my son. So it's been working and he can do a lot. He does sign language. He can pick his colors in Spanish. He can pick the states. You know, he was doing potty training since he was three months. He sleep. He's coming. Uh, yeah, he'll be here in a minute. No, he's not asleep. He's, he's, he's just on the other side. He'll be here in a minute. Oh, okay. he's, on, he's, on other, he's on the other side of the house. He had to catch an Uber. Hey, <laughs> oh, it's the house that large. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, you know, you, you keep it real. I manage. I want you to have it going on. So, um, you're beautiful. Like, how long have you been married to your beautiful wife? Well, we've been together. She's wifey for lifey. So, I love that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get married to like, fix all my tax problems. I'm not going to put that on. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we've been living as married for about, you know, 13, I think 10 years, probably. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, you, you talk about, like you said, you, you uh, have a huge pride when it comes into, it, when it comes to ownership. Um, you know, you pride with your family. Where did that come from? I mean, it just seems logical to me. I don't understand how someone doesn't see it like that. Like... Why would you be working on something to pass to someone else or for somebody else when you could be working on something to make, you know, your family's life easier and to pass to them? Why, why wouldn't you? Especially if you, have a, if you have a choice, you know. You know, sometimes there's a perspective that gets implemented in your brain just because it's been pounded into your brain over and over again, it doesn't mean it's right. 
You gotta go with logical, not what feels good, but what makes sense. Wow. Well, you know, I would just say, like, it's just like for us as an African American community, it's like we are just now starting to understand that that we have to make you know a good future for our family to pass on down to them. You know what I'm saying? Well, I've been screaming that for the last twenty or thirty years. And it's just finally this generation is catching it, and I'm glad. And also, they've been seeing me fight and be sustainable without having to fold. But, you know, this, this opinion wasn't so popular back then because it was something that was being used to control us. Here's my little man right here. Oh, my goodness, my baby. Give me Say hola. Say hola. Say hola. Say hola. Oh, he's gorgeous. Hola. Say hola. Hola, sir. Como esta? Dile bien, gracias. He said, yes. He's like, I'm just waking up. Who this one? You, 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 it's all good. He is beautiful. Thank you. Look at that. 11 months old, huh? Yeah. You know, it's funny. Listen, if you want to start talking, you know, just let me know. Oh, he's gone. He's like, I'm good. I got my He wouldn't start talking, you know. (laughs) You know, it's funny because I was the main person because I think one of the things that oppresses us as a culture what racism starts is us believing that, you know, the proper pronunciation of God's son is Jesus when it's Joshua. Jesus is the European interpretation of the name. And I would also be the same person that would say, how could Jesus or Joshua have blonde, ha- blonde, blonde, blonde hair and blue eyes and he from where it's hot? But I got two blonde hair kids and blue eyed children. I'm like, yeah. but the logic of it could be is Jesus. Yashua's father was black and his mom could have been Spanish because I don't know too many Spanish women that don't their name isn't even Mary or middle name Mary you know what I'm saying so it could have happened and been misinterpreted but at the end of the day still black you feel me I know know that's right you gotta be and this is is Rocky wifey for lifey and you know I'd love to meet her she's coming over in a minute there she goes. She, so she got her own television show. We actually was planning on uh, Fox Soul. Uh, oh, good. Uh, Hi, Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Her, her thing nice is health as well. I was like, I recognize that voice. Yeah, that's the, the <laughs> That's the fizz I know it always gets me trouble. Y'all hear me so much. Right? Yeah, I love it. Is it, it you, yeah. think, you think it's a coincidence that you're on Fox Soul and your last name is Fox? You know, I just shot a movie. And the main character's name is Fox. It's crazy how things uh-huh. happen, right? I know. And then here and we are Fox, today. And here we are today. And didn't even know it. Yeah. You ever, I was I talking know. about your curriculum and all that. And oh, yes. Me. She does all, yeah. She's a yeah. super mom. Yeah. That, also, she got a doc about infertility. We went through a lot to make him IVF. <laughs> we lost him. Oh, yeah. We lost a baby. All that. We did a lot. I mean, a whole lot went, you know, a lot went happen. Yeah. So, so we worked hard for him. Yeah, so that one there's definitely a gift, right? Yeah. They're all a gift, but we worked extremely hard for this one. Right. Well, I'm God, the blessed God bless you with him. He, he looks like he's just, you know, the fact you said you body drank, you speak language, sign language and everything. Oh, yeah. Swim, she's been taking him through it. And it's documented. So you can see it all on her TV show, Health is Health as well. It's coming. And her yeah. book, her, you know, you know, again, they wrote a, a, a what you call it. Oh yeah, she, where's your book at? Show me, show, give me well, the book. Well, I have a coloring book out right now right on now, she, Amazon, and then um, we have the the full kids book. I I need to put it out for the holidays. Oh, you don't even know what's, see, I'm in the house right now, but you know I got a full studio in uh, Burbank, but okay. but I'm editing, what I'll show you. I'm working from, because we just shot a movie, and I'm editing from the crib. Hold on. Okay. So we're editing, right now we're editing the uh, TV show about Love for a and we also have this teacher's movie. Oh, Lord. Cameras, and this is in the house. This is a C300, all that. Same one they use. But we got our own studio. It's like we got our own world. We got our own app, our own television network. We make our own movies. We make our own clothes. We do everything. We make our own education. Everything. You know what I mean? I'm not in Depend on our oppression to tell us how to live and to give us education to, that just continues to control us. I said. Yeah, okay. So you're. I got. I got. I got. So that's what I love about you. That it's like you're, you're going to make sure that like the products that you. 
produce and that people see it's really and completely your vision. Well, like I was saying, you know, we're taught that we should, we're taught things to control us. And I'm not listening to our oppressor to give us education, to tell us how to live, to tell us how to eat, and to tell us what, our, what to wear. Our culture is the jewel of the galaxy. And of course, another culture would try to control it by making us think we need them to do anything or to produce anything and to give to our own people. So they implemented this program to keep us hypnotized, but we waking up because of information and because of people consistently fighting and showcasing. You know, to me, you, don't, you shouldn't be famous unless you win a war for love. You know, like back in the Roman days, you couldn't, no matter how much money you had, if you ain't win a war for your country, you wasn't considered nothing. So I want to go down like Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar, but you know, without getting crucified and living longer and always fighting for a purpose and a cause, but doing it in luxury. But everything that we've been taught has been taught to us to control us. Agreed. Can I tell you, I, I believe the reason why I'm having like this amazing resurgence in my career is that I pay attention. And I it's, said- It's because you're the real deal. Yeah, I'm not gonna let this system tell me how long I can be hot, how long I can produce, how long, uh, you know, that I can't have my own hairline, my own movies, my own things like that. So we're definitely on the same page about that. Well, that's what so, my whole, that's the whole, my whole existence in the public eye has been that and leading by example, and also watching the mentality shift. Because again, if you were saying that 15 years ago, they might've been ostracizing you like they was trying to do me. But I just like to fight. I want that smoke. I want you to tell me I'm wrong when I'm right. You know, I want you to tell me love is wrong and hate is right. Because love is going to win every time. So I, I just that. fight with hashtag, love. Hashtag love wins. I put it up every day when I do my uh, post on social media. I think. So I want to talk about you say you like to have a core of good people around you who you can trust. See, this is something else that this generation also have to learn. You have got to learn to protect your energy at all costs. And sometimes you have to see when somebody ain't really on the team for us all to win. You know, it, it, it's a thing that happens with experience. You live and you learn. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to think that people you love, especially when you're young, before you've been betrayed, because you really had nothing for them to betray you for, you're young. But, you know, it's hard to believe that people you love would ever betray you. So the, the people that have done me dirty, when we were friends, I would never think in a million years that those would be the people that would do what they've done. So sometimes it takes experience to even understand what protecting your energy is. Sometimes you have to be exit or, you know, people got to get away from you that are usually in your, your presence so you know what energy is like without it. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you're used to being dysfunctional and shit like that, that's your normal. So right. you gotta not only protect your energy, you have to identify your energy. You have to know what you want your energy to be. And then you have to fight for that and protect that and make sure you distribute it to the ones you love. Agreed. And can I tell you, I am now a woman proudly in my 50s that finally figured that all out and finally have got comfortable in the skin that I'm in. You know, like I know my work. It took a while to get there, but it's like, I get it now. So now let's talk about you when it comes to like, you know, starting companies and, and surviving the struggles, like you said. Like you said, you want that smoke. You like, bring it to me. Because if you don't think I'm going to win, I'm going to show you. Where yeah. did, yeah, where, where, where did, where did those visions and, 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 and your, and your, and your drive come from to survive? I like having a good time. And, I, <laughs> and you know, I only want to do what I dream about doing. I only do things to make money that I would do for free. You know what I mean? Mm. And a lot of challenges, because I can dream. I, I can do this thing that most can. I can visualize things. I can architect my future. So I've been dreaming since I was young. When I was young, I dreamed about being, you know, the biggest rap company in the world. And I did it relatively easy. So then I dreamed about more shit. So I just keep dreaming, you know what I'm saying? And I know that when you dream, it starts with a challenge and a struggle. It's a fight to start something from scratch. So if I was complacent, yeah, I'd stay in the music business my whole life. But I did that when I was a teenager. It was like, why well, keep doing it? And keep talking to people that are younger than me as I keep getting older. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna keep starting from scratch. You feel me? So then I did the fashion thing. But you know, again, it was fun. I just was like, yo, hey, I don't think nobody fresher than me and I still don't. So I make the clothes instead of buying somebody else's. 
And then I was like, what can I do next? Media, I want an immediate empire. I need that big, big, big bread. I already felt every kind of money you can make so far. And so, and I think the media money's the best, but it gives you residual income. You can own it, there's freedom in it. And also information is what controls the whole world. So we never had our own network owned by us. You feel me? You know, anything that says black ain't owned by black. So that's BET and anything else that come with it. So, you know, I need to make sure that the people that I see are not programmed or the people that I'm, you know, um, seeing that, seeing what I'm doing, my fans, the people that love me and that I love, the like-minded people are getting deprogramming, not programming. You know, I'm not gonna celebrate the dysfunction of our culture because it's interesting. I'm gonna celebrate the function and the love and what it looks like when your dream comes true, when you identify your dream and what it looks like to live it. Some people are like, yo, I wanna be famous. You know what it looks like to be famous when you wake up in the morning and how hard you gotta work and what that is? So you have to know what your dream is so when it happens, you've identified it, you can marinate it. But some people be like, I wanna be this, don't know what it is, once they did, they unhappy. Because that wasn't their dream, that was somebody else's. You gotta know your dream. Let me just tell you something about you. You could always put yourself in a movie and it'll always sell. It's just at a certain price point. And that's it, you've already a brand. So you ain't got to worry about nothing. You can move when you want. If you can roll for 10 years and better, then you're good forever. All you gotta do is keep working. That's yes, it. Do the work. But my point is you personally yes. can star in any movie you want and people at least a certain amount because you're a legend will fuck with it. I mean, that's just, that's what happens when you do what you do. That's what me, I mean, it might not be the, the big, but it will be at least a million or two. You feel me? So that's power right there. Listen, as a drug dealer, if you got a hundred customers, you could be ri very rich. So if you, if you know your hundred thousand people and they each spend a, a thousand dollars with you a year, you rolling, but you just gotta give them a thousand dollars worth of shit to buy. So it gotta be, a, like you said, a cosmetic, you know, it's the octopus thing. You're the franchise, and what are the octopus legs? What are the ancillary things? But you know, you know what it is, you know how to do it. And you know a lot of people, so you know, it's been a long time, you, 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 you shouldn't be, you, you know you roll. I thank you so much. So let's take, so take a quick password. Yeah, let's take a quick password. You know, it depends on what I'm doing. So if I'm doing a certain business, I'll call someone that's been in that business for a long time and I'll talk to them. I put together a crew called the um, the commission. And that's... Uh, wow, your house is amazing. Thank you. That's Senator Eddie Milton. That's Congressman Andre Carson. That's yeah, Bishop. Hello, Andre. Yeah, that's my, that's my brother. That's uh, Bishop, um, Bishop Purnell. Um, Dr. Pennell, who's a, the, the, she's a black woman on CNN every day. Yes. Um, uh, you know, there's therapists I talk to, Taj and Melanie. Uh, and that's basically this do it all. That's basically the commission. OSG, Dennis McKeezy. I talk to the principals a lot. You know, I do a class with them for entrepreneurship every Tuesday. And then on Thursdays, all the principals do something called Off School Ground, the meetup. And they just talk about agenda curriculum and the things that need to be changed for our culture or the people that need to be helped, how to help them. So, can I, can I ask you these principles? Are they from uh, all across America or all across America? All across okay. the world. Oh, the world, wow. Yeah. So, so this is a, a, a worldly thing that you're trying to do, not just in the States. Yeah, of course. Okay. You know, the okay. States. Why not? I mean, also, you know, Mars is. Why not? Mars is getting ready to be colonized. We gotta make sure that we implement the right education there too. It's a new world, right? The end of the world happened. So we have to make sure that we're in the beginning of the new world so we don't end up in the 99%, that we're in that 1%, you feel me? But we gotta establish law now. Education and everything, everything is new. What advice would you give to someone who's struggling to start their business? 
You have to find something you really, really love that you do so much that it doesn't feel like a struggle. It just feels like you're getting better because you're doing something that you really enjoy. Almost like a gamer that gets millions of dollars for playing a video game. Yeah. If you can make money from playing video games and you can make money from anything you love, you just have to figure out what that is. That's all. You also uh, say... You have to be able to dream. You got to be able to visualize. If you can't visualize it, then how can someone else... You know, you have to be able to put that energy out like a magnet so it comes back to you. So you get a team of like-minded people that are fighting for the same thing so that when they win, you win, when you win, they win. And that's why you're all thumping together. I love it. Now, you also said that you want artists to learn to protect themselves when it comes to, like, copyright, their business and their projects. Share that thought process. That, that we can pass on the young artists out there. Because a lot of people don't realize that when they sign a contract, sometimes they're signing away their rights. Sometimes. About their own stuff that they create. Yeah, I mean, the majority of the time, it's y'all better now. Yeah, because I'm watching. But the reason, <laughs> most, when you're young and you're coming from an extreme circumstance, extreme circumstance, and you know, you've never had a dollar and somebody puts a million or two in your face and you could all of a sudden make things better. As a young person, you ain't worried about all that shit. I remember being young. But if you respect somebody like myself and you want to look like this when you're 50, then you might want to watch certain things that I watch so you can get to this place where you don't have to come outside for 15 years and you can sit and enjoy residual income and invest in your dreams while looking at a great view, smoking a joint. And this is what every, I'm supposed to be blackballed, but and all this other shit. But I've been able to create because I'm not going to be in an industry. I'm a making industry. I don't want to be in your house. I built my own. You could act like you're not letting me out. You're not letting me in your house if you want, just because I don't want to go. But you know what's going to happen? I'm going to end up buying that house and kicking you out just to show everybody that you are fronting. You understand what I mean? Can't blackball the person, the source. You can't blackball. You can't tell somebody or control a career if you are actually the person that's talented, you know, and I'm a talented businessman. So I don't want to be in a business where I can't make enough money for my children. I don't want to be in a business where I got to be told what to do with someone else from another culture is telling me what to do and how to give my culture my culture. It makes no sense. I'm not going to watch and watch other people from my culture be abused in front of me. I can't do it. So a lot of the times when you hear me beefing, I'm out of those industries. I'm like, I don't got to deal with Leo Cohen. And, you know, I call him out and whoever else I feel has been, you know, disrespecting our culture or exploiting us. I just want everyone that can't fight to know that I'll fight for you. If you can't say nothing, I will. Because I beat all of them. So watch what I did. And of course, they're going to pretend I'm not winning when I am because then they're losing. But that's the trick, you know. Independence at one point was such an ostracized thing. I remember presenting it to the whole world and then saying I was crazy. But, you know, now it's different. But also... How did that make you feel when, when they said that? It made me feel anyway. I did my job. I'd be like, yo, I'm going to stand out. You know, I think my responsibility is to pass information. You ain't got to listen. But I'm, my responsibility is to, 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 at least to at least try. But I can never, you're never going to say I didn't try. And I'm never going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to just tell you the truth. And, 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 and a lot of times what people don't understand is because they've never been in this position. If you've never been a boss, then you don't know what it feels like to be a boss. You don't know what it feels like to pay people and them not appreciate you or them not do their job or them try to sue you when you should be suing them. You've never been in the position for people not to appreciate the opportunities that you gave them because you ain't never gave nobody an opportunity in your life. So you don't even know, might not know what it is to have, you know, having money is problematic. It's not easy to keep money. Hey, okay. You know. That's another thing I try to share with you, young kids, too. You got to realize that once you get that first million dollars and you start living that lifestyle, you got to make sure. But it be so many people that comment on people going broke that never had a dollar in their life. It's, it, it's not easy to be a boss. It's not easy to have money. You got to get there before you understand it. So before you start ever judging, make sure you've been that person before you can judge that person. You know, make sure you cut a check to a nigga before and they violated or made somebody's career and they violated before you start telling somebody how to react to it. Yeah, I call that boss move. Now, speaking of boss move, 
you have a new show, In Love or a Now, and it's all about celebrating love with you and Raquel. All the things that you all have went through, the trials, the tribulations, like you said, the haters, this, that, and the third. But it's also educational, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, everything we're doing in our life, we're evolving. So we want people to evolve as well. So everything I'm teaching my son, I want everybody to know that they can teach their son. You know, a, a better parents make better parents. It can stop cycles. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, people don't know how to be in love, for real. They don't even know what it looks like. So you want to show them that. So also all the entrepreneurial stuff, you know, and the mentality. And the reasons behind, like what you read in the paper about me, now you should know they're not going to tell you the truth, but I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. You know, from every lawsuit, the NFT, everything, because I'm dealing with it. It's not. To, it's just to show you what happens at this level. And this is what comes with the game. This is what warrior status is when you're fighting for your family. Okay. I'm just doing it publicly and, and so well that people want to talk about it a lot, but I don't mind. So look, you're a queen, right? Thank you. So you're only going to be satisfied with a king. Period. And a king is going to fight so that you never have to fight. You never have to struggle. That you'll have enough money to walk away on your own, but he'll still pay the bill. You feel me? And until you find that, because you're such a high-level woman, you're going to have to keep searching. Or, lost, or, or get a boy toy. But that's about it. <laughs> And sometimes you, it is what it is. Don't try to be like, yo, but you, you, got, you know, you got to be like, but you know what it is. You know what I mean? You my boy toy. You know what it is. You know what it is. But if, if you're not making my dreams come true, you're not my man. Your man is the man that makes your dreams come true. Period. Unless they doing talking that, they your boy toy. But you can't get upset. You got to remember he's a boy toy. You can't expect a boy to be a man. If you listen, especially if you if you got to if you have to pay for anything for him, he's a rat. If he's going Dutch, he's a rat. If he got a two seat and he got kids, he's a rat. If he got a one bedroom and he got kids, he's a rat. Get him out of here. No, it's, I mean, it, it, it may, yeah, it should be. But again, I got a network, I got a streaming service. I shoot movies, documentaries. Oh, oh Dame Dash Studios. Oh, I can see yeah, You go to Dame Dash Studios right now. And it's all original programming with a point of view, scripted, movies that have been in theaters that I've made and all types of shit. And also while you're watching things, you can buy what you see without disengaging. So you could go to Dame Dad Studios right now and order it and you'll see it. I can, you know, I can show you better than I can tell you. And I've been at that. I love it. I, you'll see that I like to... How many movies have you made? I can't even count. I made a lot of movies. Wow. Yeah. I love it. I you know, I, I own all the cameras. I got lenses. I got lights. I got sound. I just shoot. All I got to do is rent people, That's really. Good. I mean, I've had art, I've had art galleries. So I've had art galleries since I would say 2005. Again, you can Google it and you'll see it in Tribeca, in Lower East Side, in Charleston, in Hong Po Hong Fong, in Hong Kong, in uh, Char Charlotte, and in in, in 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 L.A. So I've always had galleries. You know, when there was this renaissance of art, I don't know. I, I hope you know where it was coming from. It was me and hip hop. But anyway. Um, and you can Google it, the receipts are there. Um, and now the NFT world has made it where you can monetize 
anything that you are passionate about and also track it and when it sells you also will always when it resells you'll always get paid and i believe that's where the whole world is going um and i you know like i would say 12 percent of the world knows it no eight percent of the world knows it right now so i suggest that you know the other 92 catch up but yeah i have a lot of uh, artists we do things every day so you know like i was showing you raquel's coloring book but she also did a children's book so i have content that people have never seen hard drives full of it but i also have legit bona fide artists that i've collabed with like um i think the next one that's going to come out i don't know if i should even announce it yet but it's what this dude wilder and he makes he does oh, oh, oh y'all we're getting an exclusive yeah he does the biggest uh murals all over the world and He's probably I, one of the I only ask, artists that still gets a million that gets a million dollars alive for his piece. Wow, the art is that expensive? Every my, the first thing I put a up, million? the first thing I put up at the Dash Gallery was for ten million dollars, and you know what? That was in the newspaper. Ooh, I love it. So can I ask you what does the NFT stand for? Non fungible fungible token, right? Yeah, non fungible token. Fungical. Am I saying fungical? No, I can't explain it right. What that means, but I can tell you what I can just I'm gonna just tell you this. There was a lot of money, dark money made in the crypto world because it was new. It created a currency and there was nothing to spend it on because they couldn't cash out because the government would be on their head. So there's a lot of people that made like they made like sixty five thousand dollars on a penny. Stupid money. So they created things to buy and resell so they could cash out and pay the taxes on it. And also, it's so a good... crypto art? Well, it's in, like what it is, is you mint it, so it's on a blockchain, so it's in the digital world. So every single, okay. everything that's in the physical world is also gonna be uh, looked at as status in the digital world. So clothes, houses, real estate, art, everything is gonna be like, you know, just as valuable, if not more, in the digital world. And it's all tracked on a blockchain. You understand what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, you've always spoken about the importance of black ownership in the entertainment industry. How do black businesses need to evolve in every part of the process, both music and film, to become more successful and get more ownership? They got to keep working. They got to keep making more stuff. You know, mm -hmm. the more stuff you make, the more successful you get, the more powerful you get, the more money you make. You just got to keep working. And you can't, you can't be you can't be waiting for somebody to employ you. You got to create opportunities for yourself. That's the thing. I've never I've never waited for someone to employ me. That's the one thing I've never done. Mm. Dan, you've never worked for no one. You've always got to work for yourself. Not kinda. Of. <laughs> you better pull out the receipts because I know you will. You said I always have. I mean, when it, I, you got to remember, I had my first. I was a teenager with my first record deal, and I never looked back. And before that, I was a drug dealer, so now nah, I never worked for nobody. So the hustle has always been real. I think once you know how to, you know, bottle something up, sell it, distribute it, and, and also continue to do it like a business, and especially when it's not at the expense of your culture, it becomes a lot easier, you can always do it all, at any moment. You know what I mean? Like the world, like I started in a world where there wasn't the internet, you know, where there wasn't so much freedom. And with the internet, it makes it really easy because there's a direct to consumer relationship. So even with people doing podcasts now, I was doing that shit like literally in 2005. So me, me and Hip Hop Motivator was doing the culture vulture thing and just me and him would be talking and it would go viral, but it was more for the people that needed it, you know? It's like, I need to go through certain things so the world can watch how to deal with shit. Mm, and you've been through a lot, that's for sure. I mean, that's I've been through a lot in public, but who in life hasn't gone through a lot? I tell people that all the time. Sometimes you gotta go through, no, you gotta go through things. Who doesn't go through life. things? Yeah, you gotta go through things. I, I, I honestly, when I look at my life and everyone else's, I, I, just because people are famous don't mean that it's more. You understand? Like, I've lost people, but they were famous, but it hurt. But someone that loses someone that's not famous and they love them, it hurts just as much. So I haven't gone through nothing that no one... In between life, the thing about life is everyone's going to die. So 
that automatically means you're gonna feel pain, the loss of someone you love. So it's not a why me thing, that happens to everybody. In between the tragedies you can't control, that's where you gotta live and not give a f Cause you know, it's gonna happen. But, and it's, it's how you deal with those things, that's what defines you, that's what makes you evolve. So the only reason why things come my way is, I, like I said, I'm looking for the smoke. So if I wasn't looking, you know, if I was sitting around, not, you know what I mean? If I wasn't trying to conquer the world, then yeah, I would probably have a more peaceful environment. But, you know, I think my, my environment when I'm not fighting is really peaceful. And that's what I'm fighting for. So when I get to look at my child, learn all these things and chill out with, you see, I got, I got nothing but puppies around me. You see? Just puppies and all that. Cause they chilling. They chilling. They chilling. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. No doubt. So listen, my time is about to start running out with you. I just want to get a couple things. Also, you owe me an interview too. We got to swap. No doubt. I bet. Are you in LA? Sure. Yes. Oh, pull up. Yeah, for the ranch. Pull up. Yeah, I excelled through uh, COVID because it was proof of my business model. It was almost like I had been preparing for it. You know, entertainment is usually is recession proof, but it's not. Um, it's not. It's not, uh, uh, it's not COVID proof, pandemic proof. You know, because you got to go outside and you can't go outside in the pandemic. So content, which is what I've been aggregating and making for the last ten years, became the price is doubled. And because I had a studio and owned the cameras, I was able to act. I actually went and bought a ranch too around the corner from your man. And we were able to just shoot movies and we were more productive magazines, books. I shot I shot like four movies in COVID. You know? And then and, and you know, God, thank God, I haven't had any bad situations on not one of my sets because I'm so, you know, aware of COVID and respect it so much. So when it's raging out there, I ain't coming out. It's, you know, in LA right now, it's about that. You know, every day I look and see how many people got infected the day before. So it's at like a thousand, it's averaging about a thousand a day. I could work with that. But when it's like 9,000, I'm not coming out. At 3,000, I cut. You got a garbage when you come in the house. Oh, shit. I got yeah, you gotta, you gotta do all type of when you go in my house. We keep it, we keep it all too clean. And, and, and I'm not saying it can't happen because this one went out to 7-Eleven and caught it. Oh my God! And I go to damn 7-Eleven. Whatever it was, I don't know. For one second she went outside and caught it. And you know, but we never. It didn't hit her like that. Oh, you got the where the where's the um the coloring book? Here's a magazine we did during COVID. That's my daughter on the cover. Oh, I love it. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. These are all magazines we did. Now we always make magazines and stuff, you know. Those are, those are the receipts, you know. And so tell me, what do you see next besides the TV show? What's the TV show? I'm a television network. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> okay. okay. It, 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 it's it's taking this to that. Like I'm already made my dreams come true. Not only am I a television network, I also have distribution. Dame Dash Studios distribution. So I'm also putting out about nine other people's movies right now. So my dream was to become an independent, full-service movie studio that never had to ask anyone to green light. I am the green light. So it's happened. Now it's to take it to that scale. You know, I have a television network. I have a streaming service. I have the studio. I, you know, I got the distribution. Because before you make a movie, but you got to worry about getting distributed. That's not my concern no more. And you know, places like Tubi and. That's made the world, the world is starting to come around. Like Tubi's like regular television where um, um, Netflix is like, you know, with HBO or cable. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and, I have a lot of projects out there. And there's money on Tubi, you already know. I know, Tubi's good, Tubi's good. Tubi's Tubi is okay. good money, free. And guess, yeah. guess who owns Tubi? Who? Fox. Oh, see what I'm saying? Bam, now, once again, the connection. 
Vivica. The, the Vivica effect, you know? <laughs> I'm not grounding at all. I'm talking about I'm flying around and he's grounding. I'm not grounding. I know. I know. Listen, you can ground me. See, the deal during this. This is what I want to tell people about you. You've always been a mover and shaker. And look, we're even seeing that in, in, in the interview. Absolutely. And, you know, I guess, yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to tell you that's the time. I know. I'm going to use that. You probably get mad about that. Dusko Poppington, and then the, you know you go to Dame Dash Studios as well. Um, yeah, that's where you can find me. Yeah, Dusko Poppington. And you're verified, correct? Very. <laughs> and, of course, why wouldn't you be? All right, y'all. Tell your friends that they can follow your girl at Miss Vivica Fox on Twitter, at Miss V Fox on Instagram, and follow at Stage Twenty Nine Podcast too. Don't forget to subscribe, review, download, and listen. To Hustling with Vivica A. Fox, available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you want to listen. Until next time, darlings. Bye for now. <laughs> if you want another amazing video with the one and only Dame Dash, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.